Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Style Wednesday with the Queen of Style. And how is everyone doing? So before we get into our hot topic of the evening, just want to say, you know, in terms of we just heard some really, really bad news in terms of losing an amazing designer in the industry, Rocky Gatherford, and he, we lost him. And this is a designer that actually worked with several celebrities, Cardi B, you know, and, and amongst many others. We just had him, he just did an amazing interview with Fan and we just heard the news. So our condolences goes out to his family and friends out there and just making sure that everybody understands that this amazing designer, um, we just found out past um, earlier today. It's really sad news. So guys, one thing I have to say this evening is all about preparing to get back in the industry. The vaccine is happening. Everybody's actually working and getting vaccinated. And the one thing that I have to say is how prepared are we? You know, we have, we've been inside, we've been not going anywhere. And I always talk about my products, you know, my skincare line, um, La Coiffre Skincare. And you guys can follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be doing a weekly post on the products that we have in uh, how to make your skin better. And as I said, if you go on the Instagram live show, Instagram TV, you can see that I spoke about how to clean your face and what products to use. We do have a lot of amazing products, which I do use myself. We do have a skincare line and a cosmetic line that can be of great interest. So when we talk about working and focusing on getting back in the industry, I can't wait because, you know, that's what we do, that's what we live for, and that's how we have been making it happen. So one of the good things about that is that we are able to stop practicing models, and I hope you guys haven't forgot and what you guys have been working on. It should be getting your body ready because events are going to start happening soon. You want to make sure that you continue to focus on your walk, your poses, and also your health. Because you know, in the industry, you have to ensure that you are a certain size in order to make it work. When we think about models, a lot of people keep asking, why we only use a certain size model. And the one thing that I have to say about that is in the fashion industry, we have a universal size, which is almost the statistics of a, um, a, a 32, 22, 32, which says hips, waist, and bust. And that can work for any designer because usually the designer creates sample sizes and those are the sample size measurements and the requirements that is needed for the industry. Um, you can have requirements of that height as five, nine and above. And when we think of being able to flex from designer to designer, remember designer are making sample size garments where they can sell and they can actually have other buyers that are in the audience of fashion week and fashion events to come out and purchase. So that's the main concept of why a lot of times we only use industry size. Now, the industry has evolved greatly and we are now going to above a size two. We see some fours, we see some sixes, we see some eights on the runway because a lot of high-end designers are realizing the market for a little bit of a curvier model is necessary and it's needed. So when we look at what's on the runway, it's definitely having to be a little bit more diverse, a little bit more critical and a little bit more open-minded, you know, on the size and the me measurements that we were used to, which is a size zero. 
and now we're doing sixes and eights. So unless there's a specification for a show, then producers only keep sample size models which are zeros and twos. And that's for any designer that able to fit in any type of clothing from any model. So just in case you're inquiring why and how to get ready, that's one step. The other step is you want to make sure you have an amazing portfolio. And when I say portfolio, you want to look at how is, what does your portfolio book look like? You want to make sure that you have one full body shot in terms of your measurements and updating your portfolio every three months. The reason why I say every three months, because our body changes and our um, our facial features changes. So you don't want to go to a casting call and your measurements in your portfolio is something different and you have changed your features. You might have cut your hair. You might have done something different with yourself. You want to look as closely as possible to your portfolio when you're going for a casting. So when I say this, it's make sure you have current pictures in your portfolio. Make sure you have one full body image in a one piece, nothing, nothing to nothing, just basic and standard swimwear. You wanna have a fashion look and you also wanna have a couture look. You also wanna have a beauty headshot. Okay, if you have done work on one way shows or editorials, you also wanna put those in there. So the, the producers of the show uh, where you're going to can actually look at your work and see how many shows have you looked into, how many designers have you worked for, and that will actually give you the edge somewhat of the newbie, the newbies that are coming in, so then you could actually see how you fit within the market. Um, models, I always say for guys, you want to always have shoes. When I say shoes, you want to have actually shoes, not boots, not sneakers, not driving loafers. And that's one thing that I have to tell you. When you have shoes, you're able to separate yourself from the other models. You don't want to go to a casting call with jeans as well. You want to make sure you have on pants, a nice fitted tea, black t-shirt, or if you have spanks or um, workout pants, you also want to wear that so they can actually see your physique. Guys, make sure you're well groomed, make sure you're well polished, as well as ladies, you want to make sure that your hair is pulled off your face. They want to see your features. And you also want to go with not glam makeup, but basic makeup so they can actually see your beauty or your structure of your face so they could know where exactly to put you in that fashion week. Um, diversity is very critical in the industry. And why we said diversity, because we want to see all different color tones on the runway because buyers look for different styles. You're not only walking for one person, but you're walking for several designers and you're walking for a market that's international. And when I say international, it means that throughout the world. So you don't know who's in the audience. You don't know who's watching, who's seeing you. And they might just like to see that product on a different variety of models, whether your background is Asian, Caucasian, African-American, uh, Latino, they want to see a really great diverse team. And that is why it's critical for producers to make sure they show that to the audience or show that in their shows so they could have buyers and they can see the garments on different body forms, different skin colors, and different um, in different areas of the, the industry. You have we have, a, we have a lot of plus size campaigns going on right now. And it's about confidence. And when you think about plus size con, um, campaigns right now, editorials, we see Dove utilizing girls and models who have stretch marks. And some people think it's not great, but at the same time, it is great because you're able to be confident in your own skin. And these campaigns are saying, 
you know, just come as you are and make sure you look great. And I think it's a great industry and it's a great thing to do at this current state because a lot of people are still building their self-esteem and building their self-confidence. And if you see a model up there with stretch marks and you're not the perfect size that industry asks for, of course, you're going to feel confident. Of course, you're going to be happy about yourself. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that you are doing what's best for yourself. So, you know, when you think about how to enter and respect the market, you have to realize that we are evolving in fashion. Editorial is not what it was, but editorial is evolving as well. Guys, we do have our guest coming in right now. His name is Drew Felton, and he is actually a designer, and he also is... He's also a designer and he is also within the industry of model preparedness. He has a model management agency and he will be here this evening to speak with us about what's happening in the industry. Drew Felton, are you here? So when we think about, as I was speaking early on, as I was speaking earlier, welcome Drew, welcome to Style Wednesday. How are you doing? Hello? Welcome, Drew. Welcome to Style Wednesday. How are you? Hello. So as we were speaking, we want to make sure that you continue doing what's best for you in the industry as models and continue honing in on your craft, even though there's no fashion shows happening right now. You also want to make sure that you keep your body and yourself ready and get some editorials, get a, a photographer. So when the pandemic or the city is open, at least 50% and we can have events and fashion shows, what that would look like is you're all set and ready to go with your portfolio and your model walk. Drew Felton, are you there in the studio with us? I guess he's having some difficulties. I'm not sure. So as I was saying before, ladies and gentlemen, it is Style Wednesday. And as we continue to discuss what to expect in the industry, it's definitely about keeping yourself in tune and engaged with what next look like. Okay, I think he's having a little bit of difficulty joining us today. I'm not sure if he's hearing me. But um, we definitely must continue. So let me talk about the Boss Lady Cosmetics. Guys, Boss Lady Cosmetics continue to evolve. Check the website out, www.lecoffernyc.com. And you can see all cosmetics and also our beauty line. Like that. Is she looking at me? Okay, she testing. Okay, testing one, two. We're here. We are live. Hello, hello. Hello, thank you for. Wow, I can't believe it. Yes, yes. How are you doing? A little difficulties, but we made it through. How are you? I am great. I am great. Thank you for joining in. No worries, we made it. 
So, Drew, let's talk a little bit about your, your, your portfolio as a designer and as a model okay. manager, model okay. coach. Tell the people a little bit about yourself and how can you, they find you? No worries. Now, basically, my name's Drew Felton, and I have an agency called the letter Y, the letter U, Models. Y, U, Models. And I came up with that name, and I want to ask the models, why do you want to be a model, basically? So I was a model, and I started out in the 80s, and I won a few competitions, such as Faces Going Places, with Grace Del Marco came in first place, but I studied that craft so hard and walked away with first prize. And by being the first prize model, you got all the clients asking, you know, they wanna book you. So I did one of the first jobs with Salem, Salem cigarettes. And then from there, I did Newports. So, and then after that was a few liquor jobs and things like that. So what I wanna advise is, if you really practice and harness in on that craft, one day you will get your chance. And that's the day where you need to blow up. So my gift now is to give back to those young models that want their payment, that want to be sent that invoice and basically get the rate that they deserve. So I fight for the money. I fight, usually a video call, and I would say, how many hours are you going to have the girl there? Mm -hmm. And basically, they would say, hey, eight hours. I says, well, listen, to get the hair done costs money. You know, for her to get a good undergarment costs money. It, for her to get there on the set and look like a million dollars, it costs. So therefore, you need to pay her. You know, you need to pay her transportation. Even coming home, she's in full makeup. She's a little tired. She doesn't need to be on the train. So I kind of hustle with the client to get what that model deserves. And as well as developing them, teaching them how to go into a room, shaking hands. I am a teacher with the Ophelia DeVore um, Academy, which was etiquette. And we teach etiquette to the girls on how to shake hands, eye contact, how to be a lady, but still we throw that business sense. And one of the bookers were Grace Del Marco and she passed away now but uh, she was a great influence on me and giving me the opportunity of teaching and running an agency. And after her, I worked for Stanley Kaplan, which is one of the big time casting agents for movies in New York. And then on there, I went on my own and I worked with a mentor, Scott Pollard, and he had the agency Sub-Zero. And from there, I started styling and a list of high-end clients from Chile of TLC to Nick Cannon and a variety mm -hmm. of other you know, uh, coming up talent. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So you wear a lot of hats in fashion and you have been through the industry. Tell me, what do you think changed from when you were a model to now you're managing models? Back then there was a lot of yes, ma'am, yes, sir. There was a lot of old school. We were seasoned where the old heads trained us and we were respectful. And of course we didn't have the internet. So everything was by the pictures and a, you know, basically we have a poster board of a lookbook that the agency sent out, but the models are so into that quick fix and I want my money now and they need to be seasoned. You need to even hang up the clothes properly. You can't just throw the clothes on the floor. So um, we're missing that sense of training and we're missing that sense of style. And, um, you know, they're still edgy. No, the models are great now. They're great. But again, we're missing that etiquette of mom and dad teaching you how to enter a room, how to be respectful, how to say good evening, and just the energy of conversating. A lot of the models need to walk into a room and speak to everybody. I don't care if it's the cleaning help. You never know who's going to help you in the, in the elevator or, you know, you don't want to get in that elevator and have an attitude in the face. And that's what's what I see now. I see attitude and they don't know who I am or they don't know who the client is and they're rolling their eyes thinking that somebody's going to hit on them and they're not, you know, so 
you know, which I understand you put your block up, but not in this business. You need to be nice. You need to be stylized and you need to have a little self-worth. Amazing. Amazing. So when you think about um, etiquette and discipline, you know, yes. I think back then discipline was more of a forefront with the models and etiquette was actually in in line they go they went hand in hand back then right so why do you think the industry have changed so much about etiquette and discipline we don't have time there's kids having kids and you know there's no training too much you know where i hate to say it but the kids these days don't even have respect you got to all earn their respect even me before they give me that respect they want to say let me see it why should I respect you? And back in the day, we were just taught, if they're older than us, you're getting respect, exactly. no matter what you are. We can see that on this news now where younger kids are beating up older people. You know, I think there was something on the news the other day where it was a 67 year old man got punched in the face. That would, you know, that that's not right. You know what I'm saying? Respect the older people, but I teach also at Farmingdale College and I teach it from other places. And I made the kids write a paper on what is respect. And they said, you got to earn my respect, Mr. Drew. I want an OG to earn it. Show me if they're living the life the right way, if they're walking the straight line, then they give you that respect. If they don't see it, they're not going to give it. Yes, absolutely. So Tell us, why did you start the model management? It was a need where a few girls, I was teaching them how to walk and they made a casting for a music video. And one girl says, Drew, I got the job, but I'm, they don't have any, you know, to pay me. Mm -hmm. They don't have a budget. I said, you're going all the way to Florida for no budget? And what else are they asking? Well, they're asking me for some nude, good underwear. They're asking me for tracks. They're, you know, and I said, well, what about food? They said the hotel has an early breakfast and that's it. So I said, give me the phone number. So I called the casting director for that music video. And I said, hey, I, you have this amazing girl that's coming, but she is not getting on that flight unless you agree to these terms. And I laid the law down. And I says, hey, she's going to buy the hair. She's going to make the tracks, but we're putting a receipt in there for those things that she's buying for you guys. And I said, as far as breakfast is fine, but, and lunch is fine, but what about dinner? You know, she needs to eat and, you know, the set is closed down, but there's a $20, $25, some type of fee if she wants Chinese food or whatever before she goes to the hotel. So she got her money. She got her money. And then the other girls started to uh, call to say, hey, can you help me? And then that was the launch. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So that was really good. And I think that, you know, do you think um, because a lot of models or upcoming models are not managed, do you think they get a lot of exploitation? No, it's not exploitation, but the client does not want to work with someone that doesn't have a rep. They want someone to scream at. If that girl doesn't show up, which of course, if she's not getting paid and it's raining, I would stay home too. But again, that client is not paying you. And, you know, it's like, do I go or don't I go? But again, a client wants to answer to someone if that girl doesn't show up, basically. So they're screaming at me saying, where is she, Drew? Get somebody here at my location for this shoot and that's why they need that representation you need to talk someone to talk for you it's kind of hard to be the model and then ask for the money as well because you kind of build a friendship with that client so if you have someone else the middleman calling and pushing saying hey i'm going to send this to collections if you don't pay so they would say oh who is that agent he's a pain in the butt he's calling me every day you could say oh yeah He's like that. I, he's a nice guy, but he's like that. I would better pay him if I was you because you don't want a lawsuit. So therefore, you need that protection. You need that union, like a SAG Screen Actor Grill. It's a union that protect models against 
things that's out there, such as clients, or if it rains on you and you're outside and you don't have any protection, that's what a union is for. That agency would get on the phone and say, hey, my girl's in the rain, we need to take care of this. Okay, amazing. But what I have realized that the industry has changed and models are looking to that instant fame. Right. How do you, how do you put that into context with them that that's not gonna happen as soon as they start your manager? It's not microwave popcorn time. It's just not, it's no 60 seconds of fashion. No, you gotta pay your dues. Yeah, you gotta have a little bit of luck, but you gotta be groomed and you need to find out what your market is. You have a high fashion market, which isn't for everyone. She's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and up. She has a great body. You know, guys is about 5'10". You have to figure out what your market is. And commercial print is a great market. That's a lifestyle market. That's for everyone. You can look any way, crazy hair, whatever. And then sometimes you can ease that edginess, that diverseness into fashion as well with a cool, funky dreads or, you know, braids or things on that level. But there's a standard on how you look and how you present it. And that's what we get confused at. We're not presenting ourselves in a professional manner, such as a good book or good pictures. The Instagram model is great for that market, but she's not going to get that big campaign with Revlon. You understand? So I think that um, a lot of aspiring models look so, has so much influence on in, in, in Instagram that they don't understand its work and time. Right. I think like the Instagram model has become such a huge factor that a lot of times they think that I get one job and I'm now a model. Right. Whereas right. they don't understand I have to get several jobs and I have to get right. a contract signed. Exactly. exactly. And I have to be getting that editorial or that runaway where right. I'm seen in, in the stars, right? Okay, sure. And, and I think that, you know, how can we educate them more on stop thinking one show makes you a model? By logging into things like this, basically more interviews, more TV shows, they don't know what they don't know. So basically we need to educate them and to have a more of an outlet, which I praise what you do. You call me all the time for models. Um, I appreciate it. And you're so professional. Everyone loves your shoot. And you educate as you go, which is amazing. And they come back and say, Drew, boy, everything was just fabulous from the jewelry to the hair, to the snacks and even direction on how to get there. So we need more people like you, as well as myself to educate the talent, but we have a non-exclusive contract and then we have a exclusive contract, which is exclusive mean you can't work with no one else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Non-exclusive, you can work with a few people, but then that's where that respect comes in. You give the job to the first person who called you for the job. And then you have to be open to say, oh my God, Mr. Drew, uh, thank you for giving me this casting, but I got this already from another agency and I have to give them the first opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's a non-exclusive agreement. But then exclusive means you're only working for me, but I should be jumping for you if you sign an exclusive where every day there should be something for you. You exactly. feel me? I should be talking to you on a daily basis. It's almost like a big brother, big sister, and she's grooming you. And she's really, you know, welling it in far as you need to see this girl. You need to see this girl. So they're pushing you like crazy. But again, what do you got the offer? Why would I sign you exclusive? What are you giving me? Are you in the gym? Everyone say, oh, yes, I want a good husband. I want a man. But are you doing the right thing? You feel me? Do you cook good? Do you look good? Do you, you know, and it flip side for the male too. But again, it's easy to get it, but it's harder to keep it. And that's in a relationship as well in an agency. It's easy to walk in and sure, I'll sign you. But again, you got to keep it. And, and next year, you got to change the look. You got to stay in that gym. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, you know, 
a lot of times models don't realize they have a shelf life and the shelf life of models is so it you know like they laugh at me when i say we have an expiry day yeah when you if you pass 25 and you're still in the industry consider yourself lucky right joe yes and that's when you branch into acting Exactly. That's when you 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 branch into other things. A lot of models are turned into makeup artists. A yeah. lot of models turned into uh, stylists. So, and that's what happened to me. So, from my modeling, I went into a stylist and made great money. Uh, the video of uh, "I Can't Sleep" by Wu Tang Clan. I was scared to death, but we dressed them. I think they feature Isaac Hayes. I hired Robert Knight to make the robe for Isaac Hayes. And it was just a fantastic, and that was 30,000 for a stylist. But I had to dress like 10, you know, sexy girls, and then I had to dress all the clan. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard work, especially returns and things on that level. But you get 10 of those a year, and you're pretty good. Yes, definitely. So when you think about like, you know, your team, I know you do a lot, you send a lot of castings and your models are amazing. And you know, the etiquette and the behavior, cause I work with them. So I've seen them, they've been on my I'm show on them. and I just love them. And I just love that you instill the discipline. And I think a lot of times when I get into models or models ask me, you know, boss lady, um, how can I work with you? And I said, first of all, you have to have discipline. Right. Do you have a portfolio? Right. Is somebody already managing you? Right. And when I get all no's, then I said, okay, we have to start somewhere. You know, and I think they don't understand that this it's a serious job. It's not getting up overnight and saying, I want to be a model or I don't have a comp card, but I'm a saying I'm a model. Exactly. But I don't even know what a comp card is. So those are the things that I am happy that, you know, when I see why on, on their big portfolio and their comp card, I said, yes, love it. Exactly. Exactly. So definitely. Yes, 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 yes. So continue. And I love it. Every time I see those cards come in my castings and anything, I know professionalism, I know etiquette. And I think that people need to understand and models potential models need to understand it's not just a picture that you just took randomly and you have to present yourself in such a way that you become that iconic look or you get that look that you're looking for right so tell me i know you're a designer as well yes when did you start that i started I started fashion design. I got accepted to FIT, mm -hmm. the Fashion Institute of Technology. I got a scholarship okay. from the University of Buffalo. And what happened was I went to the University of Buffalo for three years, and then they sent me over to FIT for two years, and I received a bachelor's in fashion design. I started out in menswear and switched over to women's wear. And why did you switch to women's? It was just more, it was a little easier to me. It came natural to me. Uh, my sister always had big hips. She was my baby sister. And she would make me make her clothes because her waist was so small, but her hips were huge. And we would have to buy larger clothes and safety pin them in. And then when she get to school, the safety pin would come loose and stick her. And so she would say, please make me some pants. So she would take the curtains off the window and I would put the pants on and cut them out. So I've been sewing. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember. I think since the seventh grade. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So what are your plans for 2021? I know it's March already. Can you believe it? Sure. March I have a beautiful already. collection of a young model, Chanel, and she's posing with another model, L.E. They're just posing. And I'm going to flip that over. Yes. Good. And show you what the line looks together. Amazing. I, I'm Good. Excited. And yep. Watch this. So I'm working on a line with Liam Muno, and that's under Christian Rourke. And he, 
need to design some new looks. And it's a wrap skirt in an African print. Yes. Gorgeous. And it's a beautiful knit top and a kente cloth fabric. The yes. sleeves comes off, but she's going to leave them on. And it's a turtleneck. So it's a African print, but a modern style. Yeah. And then Christian challenged me to make a designer underwear sad swimsuit for men. So I used one side of the kente cloth and knit, and I did a nice crop pocket for the male crotch. And I solid, I put some solid fabric on the side, and I'm working on a man's suit and kente cloth to go with that look pose together. Great. Looks amazing, amazing, amazing work, Joe. Amazing. Congratulations. And thank you. And now I have a new suit that I'm working with and it's ideal, ideal fashion. And this is a brand new model. He's being seasoned. This is Scott. And Scott is new on the scene, but look at this beautiful brocade fabric. I love that fabric. And it's blue with silver and a satiny finish. Gorgeous. Thank you so, so much, Scott. So basically, that's the new look that I'm showing for this season. Oh, great. I love it. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait. I can't wait for you to see it. I know. I'm excited. So what a, tell me an event that you're most proud of, like one of your proudest moments as a designer slash model coach. Mm. Okay. The... My fashion show was one of the most um, successful events that I had. I asked um, the lady from, oh, it's a clothing line in Harlem. I'm trying to think. Uh, Princess was her name. Princess. Brownstone was the lady that helped me put this fabulous show together. And it was kids where I trained the kids um, two days of a workshop and we had video and boy, did they walk. They walked for the gods. And one of my other proudest moments is winning 1996. In 1996, I won John Blasting Game Model of the Year. And before then it was very masculine, very strong, very manly men that would walk the runway and place. Yeah. So with a little femininity and a little bit of flair, I walked away with the first prize and the round trip ticket to Paris. Nice. So nice. after I won that, that opened doors for other guys such as Timothy Smart. He won a few years later and it was back to back. I would just say guys with a little bit of flair or how you doing? And we just walked away with it. So I kind of is very proud of that, where I opened that door mm -hmm. and uh, let them know that we can turn a fashion show as well. Definitely, definitely. So I know we are trying to come out of the pandemic and everybody's getting vaccined and it looks like we're going to have some, some, something happening soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So how have that affected your your modeling and your agency? Terrible, terrible with the modeling agency part where the girls that was doing extra work, you know, in small beauty shoots, that was just shut down. Everything turned virtual. And for one point, this time last year, it was nothing. Everyone was so scared. So then it started to pick up a little bit with a few shows here and a few videos. I think Delta came through and they had a fashion um, fashion show and they paid the models and we had to videotape different designer scenes. So that was great, you know, to pick up. And now we're having a few more uh, shows that was on rooftops yeah. and different things like that. So we appreciate that. And, um, but far as print work, it's a, still a little slow, but I say, don't stop. Don't go in that refrigerator and start eating. You keep your sit-ups because it could change tomorrow. So I would just say, keep working out as well as my design team. I, I haven't stopped sewing. I, I'm making masks and everything else. You know, every day I do a new mask. To, to, you know, to just wear. So you can't stop your craft because it's going to be over soon. 
That's and I'm shooting a lot as well, where I had to pick up my own camera because some of the models were scared to go out to shoot. So mm -hmm. I started shooting and developing the film and coming up with some good pictures and working with a young man named Tony Ware. He's shooting and I'm making Christian Rourke shoot. So, um, you know, you never know who has that talent, but if you're in fashion, you got that eye. Exactly. And I think that's good because, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. we, you know, you just want to make people as comfortable because we're back shooting as well. And it's just making sure you come prepared with your mask, the makeup artist, all this good stuff and making exactly. sure everyone feel comfortable, you know, even though it's a, a pandemic, but we want to make everybody feel comfortable. And, you know, one thing I make sure that my team asks, are you comfortable touching my skin without gloves? Or do you want me to wear gloves? Yes. You know, yes. you know, those kind That's of- That's so important to ask. Yeah, you before we ask start them. the process. And, you know- so are you comfortable with this? When we do the makeup, we know that we can have the, um, the face mask on, but you know, are you comfortable? And that's okay. my one thing when I do shoots, I want to ask everybody, are you comfortable? Right. Are you okay? Are you okay with um, the makeup artist touching your face? Wow. You know, because we want to make sure that everybody is in such a good space because we don't know where this COVID- Pandemic, exactly. So exactly. I always want to make sure any models, you know, feel as comfortable because then you, if they're not comfortable, the pictures are not going to be great. And we know what that, that looks like. True, so true, Definitely, true. we want to make sure that we continue doing that. Exactly. So, so, tell and me, I do, I do ahead. recommend the vaccine. I do recommend it. I know I'm watching too. I'm watching carefully, but I just feel that we do need it. It's, it's like, I think in a few months, if everyone's in a room that had the vaccine, it's safe. Yeah. So, you know, I do recommend to, yeah, I know how we are and we have to watch and see who drops first, you know, but I don't, I, I think we're gonna be fine with it. I think we're gonna be fine with it. I think we just need to stay healthy. Um, yeah. I am in partnership with IF Models, be on the lookout. It's a high fashion agency, it's all women. And it's some beautiful black beauties in there. It's almost like a box of Godiva chocolate with a little hint of white chocolate. But the girls are strong, they are fierce, and they are so pretty. And real quick, I just want to take a look at one girl that's um, on top of our list, which is Chanel. And look at this face. Look at this bone structure. Just look at the attitude. Love that. Those cheekbones are amazing. Kidding. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay. love it and she works it i mean she she really old school well we teach her the old things and you know from the nails to the look and then the smile and just comes in like a million dollars so god bless her but definitely look out for f models okay i will i will definitely thank you so drew tell us where we can find you and how they can get in contact with you for that discipline and etiquette of being a YU model. Excellent, thank you for that shout out. But um, we could definitely go on Instagram and uh, you can always find me, uh, check out IF, which is IF Models. And that's under Drew Felton and Irving Nix. And that's NYC, IF Models NYC. And then of course mine, and my is more commercial. I'm more commercial with a hint of the fashion. I like to get where the money is. You know, that commercial print, it, they pay. They pay good. Fashion is more foo-foo. It's yeah. more, what are you wearing? It's more whatever, but they don't pay. About yeah. 250. You understand to start out for a fashion editorial or a show or something, you might get lucky and get a 750 job, yeah. but it's all about the look and you know, the sucked in cheekbones and all that. I like to go where the money is, where is the big campaigns and the $1,500 jobs and, you know, things like that for diesel or Jeep, you know, things like even coffee, but that's where your money is. And um, just stay loyal, but the letter Y, the letter U models, and it's why you want to be a model. That's what, that's the first thing when they come to see me, I say, what do you want? Why are you here? And they give me the history and then I let them know, okay, this is what you need to do. Come back and see me again, but I need a six pack. Come back and see me again, but I need you to get rid of those green nail polish. 
you know, come back again and, you know, let's walk in some heels. So um, old school. And I think that is so funny because sometimes when models come on my shoot and I look at their nails and I look at, I say, okay, there's the nail polish remover. Right. <laughs> One of my girls came to you with green nail polish. I'm going to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a polish remover. You can yes. put stuff right there. And then once you're finished, then we could put some clear nail polish, which I have, and we'll take care of it. And they usually just look at me like, oh, wow. I'm like, yes. Because, you know, it's just that we're so old school that we know clear nails or like a French tip, whatever it is. So because we don't know what you're going to wear. So how exactly. can you go with a color nail Sure. and you're not sure if the designer wants that exactly. look? You don't know. A red nail know. and a green dress does not work. <laughs> That's not work. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, one more question I have for you. Jim. Sure. What are your thoughts on the tattoos? Because I have my thoughts on the tattoos. What's your thought? <laughs> <laughs> for a girl who wants that real money, such as Macy's, such as where she's working every day, there's no tattoos. That girl who's in a Victoria's Secret swimsuit, so that's a specialty model that's going to go with crazy with the tattoos. I say a real model would get a tattoo and have it hidden, have it on the inside of her palm, have it on, on her ankle, have it on her back almost, have it where, you know, she can pull up, you know, her underwear or whatever, and it's be hidden. Well, so it's somewhere that shouldn't be seen. And I think that that's another myth in the industry right now, because, you know, I see girls come in and males as well come in and saying they want to be a model, but they have a whole sleeve. Mm -mm. It's now, a specialty. How, how can we send you out? Yeah. Job. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I can't. Unless it's the edgy. You know, unless it's an edgy swimsuit line or an edgy editorial, but that's messing up your money because some market. jobs you can't get. It's a very small market. It's and you're boxing yourself in. Don't forget that. With all those tattoos, you're in a square box. The tattoo box is what I call it. I call it that as well. And, you know, I do my swim line and sometimes they I, I don't choose them because I don't want a tattoo in my swim line. You know, I want to sure. see clean, sure. pretty skin. I want to see that beautiful. I don't want any distractions because it's all about the swimwear and yeah. you showing off that swimwear. So I think it's a little bit of a distraction. It is. So, and how it can is. we get that message out though? You know what? They're going to do what they want to do. You were young too. You understand? And I was too. And I wanted that tattoo. But my father says, this is God's body and I got to give it back. So don't mark it up. So that scared me. So I have but, no tattoos. I don't have any regrets. No, you don't have any. I have none. Wow. God bless you. Being in the industry. I had, I have learned that pretty skin is what matters. Okay. You were blessed. You and were blessed. Did your mom insist that you have no tattoos? Did mom scare you? No, you know, it was nothing like that. I just knew what I wanted. Okay. And for me, it was, a, I am not putting something on my skin that I not going to like tomorrow or gotcha. gotcha. I'm going to change my mind in a few weeks. Sure. Sure. You know, knowing sure. who I am and sure. we're in fashion and we're set and our visual process is ever changing. Right. I couldn't see myself having to live with something that I did when I was 12 when I did when I was 17, that I did when I was 20. Because exactly. for me, I am my brand. Mm -hmm. And I always say that because you represent what you are and you, you represent who you are. And when you stand in that lineup and you have to say you're in the bodysuit in that one piece with your hair pulled back with little makeup, right. they have to see right. the flaws the flawless and everything else. Exactly. And I think that they understand that in this um, area that we're in right now, that right. a lot of models are thinking, oh, she didn't choose me because I have a tattoo. Yes, I didn't choose to be how to have a tattoo because I don't want you in my swimwear with a right. tattoo. Right. And they don't understand that 
in high end fashion, you can't wear tattoos. They don't like that. Sure. Unless different strokes for different folks. But if they keep going, you're absolutely right. But, but if they keep going, they might find an edgy swimsuit designer that would like that rebel look, you know, so you don't want to give up. But definitely in this work business, if you want to work, no tattoos. It's just common sense. The guys is a little bit more edgier. You yeah. know, the guys can get away with it. Yeah. But especially for a pretty girl, even, you know, just like you said, you need that pretty skin. And that's what they need to realize that they're in a box when you have tattoos and there's certain jobs that people won't pick you for. And, you know, as you said, you want to go where the money is and where the money is, they don't want that stuff. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They don't want that stuff. No. So I get so upset when a client, they don't know who I am and they don't know my ethnic background. Yes. When they say, Drew, I would like, please send me over a white girl dipped in chocolate i get so offended but they want that straight nose they want that mannerism you know and uh, um i send them what i want to send them you know and um hopefully they they pick you know one of my girls of course but um yeah that i get so offended i want to say something but i can't it's work and they don't realize you know uh what they're saying but again it's craziness, you know, but again, I just send them, you know, the top of girls on the roster and keep it moving. And, and that's what all we do. So thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure. I'm so happy that you came to Style Wednesday with me. And I got to tell you, continue doing the amazing work and congratulations on everything that you have been doing. Exactly. Thank you so much for, uh, I'm so, I thank God that I made it through. And yeah. uh, my beautiful models, the work of I Irving Nix, you. Tony Ware, and Christian Rourke. And love you to death, boss lady. Thank you. And it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Stay covered, stay covered up. Absolutely. You look great. Hold, guys. Hold. Guys, there you have it. Drew Felton from why you models and designer telling you how it is in the industry what to happen what you need to make happen going forward and how can you change and become a model guys thank you Earth. thank you until next week wednesday i pray